Max Kramer. Quaint. Where does it begin? What is the source of the claim? How do we, as individuals, make claims? Speaking for myself, I have a group of senses. Basically, it could be construed as my port of sensation. You have your five basic senses. Some people say there are more, perhaps less, but in any case, we can certify that we sense things. Seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting, along with those other emotional sensations that we feel. These things are tangible. I have heard other people say that sensation is no contract. Let's stop a minute. How do you spell the word sensation? It begins with S E N S, right? S E N. What other word begins with S E N? Sentence. So if sensation is no contract, then sentence is no contract. And guess what compound fact contains the word sentence? Correct. Sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. So those individuals that claim that sensation is no contract, I have yet to see any closure on how they would certify that. Simply because everyone has sensations. And if you don't sense anything, then you're not going to be able to make a claim. Sensation could also uh, spill over into first-hand knowledge, the first-hand knowledge of your sensation. So the way I do it is I look at it as I'm sensing everything. And as I'm sensing it, my verb of the thinking is compiling these things. So I have data that comes into my port of sensation, and then I cognize it, I think about it, and then I create my claims and transship them out as knowledge. So I just told you and gave closure to the fact that my knowledge is rooted in my cognition of my senses, the port with which the data, the external data, comes in, just like any port. It's complete 100% logic, how this works. That is why, in my document contract postal vessel court venues, I will put a claim in there that says something uh, similar to, for this claimant sensation of the cognition is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. I'm giving closure as to where my knowledge comes from. Then, in each successive claim, I would start with, for this claimant's knowledge of the facts, is, and then go on with whatever claim I am making. First, I establish the source of the knowledge and then I proceed with conveying that knowledge using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, mechanics. It's very simple, it's very logical. In the mechanics of the sequencing of the positionals themselves, each claim must have a two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. In other words, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts, that's two position lodial fact phrases. For the claimant's knowledge being one, of the facts being two. For the claimant's knowledge functions as the cause of the claim. 
The cause of the claim is the knowledge, in this case. What's the claimant's knowledge concerned with? The facts. So you have a cause and you have a concern. Two position lodial fact phrases. Now, one can safely put a verb in there. And one more point I'd like to add about the two position lodial fact phrases. You need two points with which to draw a straight line and establish a geometric level plane field of contract. These two position lodial fact phrases establish that. Two points. Establish your straight line. You know where you're going, and it's correct. Then you can put your verb of the thinking in, which would be singular or plural, depending upon the fact in the cause of the claim. Then that would move the claim into the possessive, whatever that may be. And the possessive would then either be followed by the authority of the claim, or it can continue on into another concern. If one continues after the possessive to follow that with a concern, then one must follow that concern with another possessive. Then, at that point, if the claimant wants to end the claim, they would follow that possessive with the authority. If they do not want to end the claim, then they would follow it with another concern. And then they would have to follow that concern with another possessive. And again, you can end the claim there and put the authority or continue with another concern and then you would do another possessive so on and so forth using these mechanics. This is the mathematical interface and how it works forwards and backwards and the facts hold the same value forwards as they do backwards. If you end a claim on a concern, in other words if you say for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the claimant, you have broken the mathematical interface because you've ended on an of the. Because backwards, how would that read? With the claim. And correct sentence structure does not start with with the. It always has to start with for the because that is the cause. The positional for, F-O-R, functions as the cause. One word, one meaning. One positional, one function. One positional, one congruency. You do not start a correct sentence structure with a possessive. There's nothing to possess. First, it has to be, it has to have a cause. And of course, you wouldn't follow a cause with a possessive. And you would never put a cause after a verb or two causes in a sentence. Because then again, the mathematical interface would be broken and it would not work forwards and backwards. It's a very precise me method that Colon David Eiffelwin, Colon Miller shared. And on this YouTube channel that you're watching, I do indeed have two videos with Colon David Eiffelwin, Colon Miller himself explaining this. Now you'll watch the video and you will see that instead of using the word concern for the positional of, he uses the word consequence. I myself have taken out the word cons uh, consequence from my construct because I have found that sequence is no contract. I have found for the most part that the prefix se when it precedes a hard consonant like q means no contract so i've worked very hard at taking out the particles of negation from my construct and therefore consequence and sequence are not in my correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contract so back to what I was talking about, where claims come from. To reiterate, they come from knowledge, and knowledge comes from the cognition 
of a claimant's sensation or the claimant's cognition of the sensation. That first-hand knowledge of the sensations are, is then formulated into claims and transshipped out from the port of sensation through a conveyance of knowledge. When one is a steward of one's grammar, one can safely navigate and create contracts and be steward of these contracts in the now space, giving closure on an as-needed basis, which is exactly how I do it. I don't necessarily send my claims out to fiction entities because what's the point? They're fiction. I only do it as needed. And that's only when I'm traveling and it's necessary or when I'm being trespassed upon and it's necessary. I certainly don't go around announcing these things because I'm peaceful and neutral with the honor and grace, rule one, rule equal. It is it is kind of like Colin David Ivan Colin Miller once said. It's like using a wrecking ball to swat a fly. And I, I actually would go one step further and use the analogy of, of a nuclear bomb to swat a fly. Some people, sometimes you just need a fly swatter, sometimes you need a wrecking ball, and sometimes you need a nuke. It just depends upon how hostile the other party is. Thank you for watching.